Hey everybody, Lewis here, Fire Shack Barbecue and other things. Well, today we're going to cook a rack of ribs on our Pit Boss Copperhead Onyx Series 4. Um, so, I did the burn in last night and uh, we're ready to fire up. So, I've got water in here. Um, I also have my Therm Pro, and we'll get in here and look at this closer. We're going to monitor the pit temp with that. And so let's get this set in here. So the pit boss probe is back here. We're going to set this on the rack. Let's get this in here like that. Put that there. And this right in here. So we're going to use this as well as the one that uh, probe that comes with it. Now, let me get this unwind here. So this is the probe that comes with it. Um, I am just going to put the hand there. I'm not really supposed to let this touch anything metal. So I'm going to set it like that. And we'll just so we got three different probes on it. And as you can see, condition right now, we're looking at 35 degrees and it's lightly snowing. So let's get the thing, uh, let's get the pit boss fired up here. Regulators! Mount up! Alrighty, so let's zoom in on that. So right now, I have it set for 250 degrees. And we've got uh, another probe in there, along with, like I said, our firm probe. Uh, I have that in there. I have a good buddy, John, who has one of these. And what he says is that the pit boss temp controller uh, internal temp runs about 10 degrees lower than what it's actually set at when he uses his Maverick uh, as a uh, secondary probe on it. So we'll see what the Therm Pro says, we'll see what the uh, internal standard probe says, and then I've got uh, the, another probe set up inside there, as you can see. underneath here, the standard internal probe port is back there, and then I have one just hanging in here. So, as you can see, it's already starting to smoke. Pretty soon it's going to ignite, and uh, we'll go ahead and season up the right ribs. So, the way that I have it set up, I plan on running the ribs right here on this rack. Uh, we might have to change plans or something. We'll just see how it goes. But, yeah, we're getting all fired up here. All right, here is our, uh, what are these? These are St. Louis Styles pork spare ribs. Um, they were 298 a pound. This is about 3.8 pounds to 11.56. So let's go ahead and get this cut open here. I always like to uh, pat my meat. I always like to pat them dry a little bit. There's one side. Flip it over. Flip the other side. I like these because they're already pretty well trimmed up into shape here. These ones, these actually have pretty straight bones, not too bad. Alright, flip it back over. Got the uh, little flap here. Put this off. Uh, 
Using my uh, Pit Boss knife here. Pit Boss. I do like these knives. Um, but, you know, there's some thick fat right there. Now, I am not going to really remove their membrane, but I am going to score it. Just run my knife down at a couple places here. I still not going to worry. Well, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to trim up this end right here. Make sure I ain't hitting no bones. Square it off a little bit. All right. So this, I just have a cheap little pan, disposable pan with a piece of foil on it. And all I'm doing there is just so when I uh, put the rub on, I'm not getting it all over the place. I'll still get it all over the place. But that's what so this is at uh, Riley's House of Spice, uh, or Life of Spice Hickory Barbecue Rub. I just put it in this container. This is really good rub. Got a nice little coat on here. Get the sides. Best you can. Right. And then I like this Weber uh, KC barbecue. And I just come back over the top of the hickory, like so. Give a good little pat down. Right. Flip it over. And repeat the process. Weber KC Chicory uh, mm, These are going to be so good. Alright. So what I like to do kind of use that uh, foil to get all the excess back on the ribs like that. So here try to do this. I'll show you. Got the uh, Therm Pro right here. It says that the grill is at 214 right now. Um, and remember, we have it set for 250. It's at 217 now. Um, I just, on this, I just have the 324. Uh, really, if you stuck that probe in something, then you can set that uh, to what temp you want the meat to finish at. Right now, I have it at 324 just so it won't alarm out because uh, I'm just using it as a... Uh, as a grill probe, not a meat probe. So we'll let it come up uh, to when it's, when it's uh, the pit boss says 250 out there. These will just set aside and uh, we'll get it on the grill here in a few minutes. Okay, so the firm Pro says that the grill's at 254. Let's see. This says it's at 244. So let's go down. Now it's 245. Let's go ahead and get our ribs and get them put on the base. This one dropped a bit, so we'll just leave it here. Um, so my plan is to run these for two hours, and then I'll take them out and wrap them, and probably let them go for another hour, hour and a half, and then unwrap them, to probe them, and uh, see where they're at, and then uh, 
depending on where they're at, we'll decide if we need to put them back on or not. Two hours untouched, hour and a half wrapped, and then see how long we need to put them on after that by probing. Yeah. As you can see, it's snowing pretty good. It wasn't supposed to snow today at all. So, uh, yeah. You can see back there, there's the pit boss running away in the snow. <laughs> all right. We'll come back. We'll check them on them. We'll check in on them here in a bit. Okay. We're one hour in. Let's have a look. So, as you can see, the controller's at 249. It's been bouncing between, I would say, 249 and 251, which is impressive. That one there, that's the one, like I said, that I just have hanging in there. I'm not going to use that as a judge at all. Uh, but we come up here. The Therm Pro says it's 241 in there. So a little bit of a difference, um, but not enough to worry about. Um, you can see it's got to get some dripping on. I uh, can't see it with the reflection, but dripping's going on down on the uh, grease cover. Um, yeah, I'll talk to my buddy. I know he wraps his, uh, but I think you're blocking the little vents for that grease to run in. So anyhow, yeah, we'll check back in about an hour. Okay, the ribs have been on for a little over two hours. Let's have a look. So that says the grill temp is 244. Pit boss sitting right here at 250. Fake butter here. It's quite a bit. The ribs sit down right there. Get them back out on the pit. All right, so we got them back on the uh, pit boss there, all wrapped up. I just put butter on them. I didn't do uh, brown sugar or barbecue sauce or anything like that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let them go for another hour and then I'm going to probe them, uh, see how tender they are. Um, I think it's only going to take another hour. Uh, but we will uh, come back in an hour. It's running great. Um, you know, like I said, there's about an eight, eight to 10 degree difference between the two and uh, that uh, PID controller on this, uh, like I said, I have it set at 250 and it's not varying more than five degrees. Uh, it stopped snowing and it's still about 35 degrees out here. But all right, so we'll let it go for an hour and we'll come out. All right, so it's been another hour uh, of them being wrapped. Let's have a look here. Our grill has been bouncing between. 246 and 250. Uh, the Firm Pro has it at 234. So, check it out. 
colors real quick. say that it should say off but it hasn't yet so we'll let it just power itself off. Let's go inside and take a look at these. Okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna unwrap them here. Not burning our hands too badly. Put them over here. Look good. Now this is a uh, holy garlic seasoning. Okay. So and then this is our house barbecue sauce here. Get it open. Take this. Take a brush. Lightly coat it. Alright. Hmm. Like that. How's that? like this. Mm. Dang. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just set these in a warmer box eh, for like 15 minutes and let that kind of set and then we'll cut into them. Alright. Let's go ahead and uh, take these off of here. We slice them up. We're going to go here first. See how they look. Mm, they are coming out perfect. Take a look at that. Mm, doesn't that look good? Just making a mess here, guys. We'll get them all sliced up here and then we'll try one. Yeah. Can't complain about those now, can we? on the plate. I guess you really don't, can't see the plate, can you? I'm going to leave that one there. Alrighty. We'll eat this one. Doesn't matter good. Let's take a bite. Get it from the other side. It's got more meat to it. How's that for a bite? Mm. Mm. Wow. 
that's a good rib right there. Look at that bone. Right off of it. Let's recap there. So, saw what I did there. I uh, seasoned them up and uh, got them ready, but I fired up the uh, copperhead first, set it at 250. Uh, the Therm Pro uh, external probe system, uh, it showed that it was running about 240 to 242. That uh, copperhead, it ran from like 247 up to 253, 254. So not a big swing there at 250. I'm going to try again uh, here in a while. I'm going to set it like at the low smoke. See if that produces a lot of smoke. Let it go for an hour on some ribs and then crank it up. We'll see how it maintains when you start playing with the uh, temperatures throughout a cook. Um, so I put them on there for two hours at 250. And then I took them off. I put a little bit of fake butter down and wrapped them up twice, uh, wrapped them up tight, double wrapped them, put them back on there. Uh, for about an hour, it was about an hour and 15 minutes. Took them off, brought them in here, uh, sauced them, and then uh, stuck them in a warmer Cambro or a cooler, if you got a cooler that you can set them down in, uh, on the foil. I didn't cover them back up, I just set them on the foil uh, and then set it in the in the cooler, that basically, so and put the lid on the cooler so that it kind of steams and sets that sauce. And then, uh, yeah, I got it in shutdown mode right now, but you can see delicious looking ribs. Right, so what do I think of that uh, copperhead? So it's smaller than the Series 5, uh, which, you know, it's a Series 4, but it added, that is what it is. But it cooked it very nicely. But it uh, ran those ribs beautifully. Um, the assembly was super easy, and these ribs came out great. Yeah, I think you can get, uh, you know, two St. Louis-style trimmed-up ribs on each rack, and there's five racks, so, you know, that's, what, ten ribs, rack of ribs. Uh, yeah, you can get some, probably five full chickens, uh, you know, if you spatchcock cock them. Uh, briskets, uh, you're going to have to trim that brisket up pretty good, and I'm going to say three max, but, you know, they say five. Uh, I guess if you're going to trim the top down and make it all nice and even, then maybe you can get five, but I, would, I don't push it that much. Anyhow, overall, I enjoyed cooking with that. It did a great job. Uh, you know, three and a half hours, four hours, I got ribs for dinner. So it did great, and they taste amazing. Anyhow, hope you enjoyed this video. Like I always say, you can do this too. It's not that hard. Until next time, my friends, grill on. I'm going to go eat some ribs now.